So let's have a look at uh, the X.25 network as an example uh, that uses virtual circuits. Um, so it's a packet switch network, um, but it is based on connection oriented services. So it's based on uh, virtual circuits. So when you initialize a virtual circuit, it allocates buffers to each virtual circuit to make sure that as the packets come through that they can uh, be delivered. Um, it has a sliding window, window protocol between each pair of nodes along the virtual circuit uh, and flow control. So the idea is that you can keep feeding uh, the packets in. Any packet loss will get detected at a single link and can be healed at that point. Uh, and then it will uh, get buffered on uh, to the next one uh, and to the next. Uh, and you know, in theory, the idea here is to provide the maximum reliability uh, of delivery of uh, the packets. Um, so the circuit will be rejected at the setup stage if the node isn't able to provide enough buffering uh, that's required to satisfy the needs of the, um, uh, the particular uh, virtual circuit. So again, the resources, if you like, are allocated uh, initially during the setup so the network knows whether or not uh, it can keep, uh, whether, whether it can sustain that circuit at that point in time. Um, in comparison, of course, with the datagram model, uh, it's possible that uh, packets or frames will get dropped because at the time that a particular packet is being sent, there may not be the resources available. Uh, and you know, having quality of service as a result on a datagram-based model is harder uh, because you know this we're not able to dedicate resource to a particular uh, connection. So yeah, this, in, in a sense, is kind of the, the main advantage really for virtual circuits for most uh, purposes. Uh, and so virtual circuits are used in frame relay, which I'd already mentioned, um, an ATM, asynchronous transfer mode. Uh, and again, these are uh, network schemes that tended to use short frames, again, kind of, sort of out of some of the history uh, of when they were created. Uh, and then, you know, so Frame Relay uh, in particular was really designed around the, you know, making this idea of having uh, virtual circuits and virtual private networks over a shared fabric. Uh, and so the sense of having virtual circuits made a lot, you know, it's a, it makes sense as a, um, uh, an approach uh, for that. So if we look at asynchronous transfer mode in a little bit more detail, so again, connection oriented uh, packet switch network, uh, they call the packet cells and look now how short they are compared to ethernet which can have one and a half kilobytes even on the uh, the oldest ethernet we have a five byte header and a 48 byte payload so very short uh, frames so here if we had even an ipv4 source and destination address we'd be chewing up eight of those 48 bytes if we were using ipv6 just the addresses would chew up 32 of those 48 bytes so uh, you know this is really not suited to end-to-end -end, uh, datagram routing. Uh, instead, uh, it, it relies on um, virtual circuits to, um, to make it reasonably efficient. And they made this design because what they wanted to do was have fixed length packets. So unlike ethernet where the packets can vary in length, every um, ATM frame is five plus 48 is uh, 53 bytes long. And by having the, um, all of these packets exactly the same length, uh, the hardware to do the switching, and again, because ATM was designed back when hardware was less capable than today, it was easier to design the hardware. And it also made it much easier to receive multiple uh, packets in parallel and process them in parallel because you always knew that the, the packet boundaries were going to line up in a nice way. And so this would enable for very efficient pipelined uh, hardware implementations. So if we have a look at the, um, uh, the contents uh, of an ATM cell. Uh, we have a, a number of fields uh, in the, uh, the header. So we have, this is our frames going from the host to the switch. So we have the generic flow control. Uh, we have the virtual circuit identifier is explicit in here because this was designed around virtual circuits. Um, we have uh, cell loss priority. So if there is congestion in the network, how are we going to deal with that? Um, we have a, an 8-bit CRC to protect the, uh, the entire header. Uh, when it's between network interfaces, so between switches, uh, the GFC becomes part of the, um, uh, the VPI field. 
uh, which is providing information for the, uh, the switches to understand how to, um, uh, to process this. So, uh, yeah, so that was ATM. So source routing uh, is different to virtual circuit uh, based networks. So here, the source node actually says exactly how the frame should get sent. So it's a bit like having ev the information that you would need for every virtual for a virtual circuit rather included in every frame. So we can specify exactly how it will go through the network. So we say, uh, you know, here's our stack of uh, interfaces out which the packet would need to go. So host A sends it to switch one, and it pops the um, uh, the one. Uh, off the front, or rather it actually it moves it to the end of the queue uh, and sends it in uh, to switch two. Switch two now sees the zero is now at the end. So it goes, oh, I need to send it out on zero. Again, puts the zero at the uh, the other end, as we see here. Sends it onto the next switch and it goes, oh, okay, port three is now at the end. So that will then deliver uh, out to the end. Um, and host B now has uh, the information it needs to send it back. Uh, actually, let me just double check. Yeah, no. So um, yeah, so host B is able to receive the um, uh, the packet in that regard. So there's other ways that you can manage the um, uh, the path in uh, the source routing. So you can have uh, so as it comes in. So again, we we have the uh, the the path encoded in there with the rightmost element being the um, uh, the next one, and so we could add in um, we have a, a pointer actually change where we're looking at in there rather than actually moving the elements around. So when it first comes in, we can say right, we're pointing to A, and then we could change the pointer to point to B, so we don't have to rearrange the the bytes in there, and that may be uh, more efficient to implement in. Uh, a hardware implementation because you have fewer memory accesses required to change it. You only have to change one byte rather than moving potentially a whole set of bytes around. Again, less of an issue in modern hardware, but in older hardware, uh, this might be beneficial. Okay, so we'll stop there and continue this in the next video.